Hi, this is Mike Maloney, and I'm joined once again by Jeff Clark. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Mike. It's great to be back with you. And we've got a little bit different video this week, not our usual uh, segments, because we want to deal with the elephant in the room with gold and silver prices falling today at the same time that the producer price index just hit another record level this morning. So gold is down. It's about 1772 as you and I talk. Silver's down over 2%. It's down at 2188 as we talk. And more importantly, Mike, the gold-silver ratio now just hit 81 again. So uh, the pr producer price index is at a record level, meaning inflation is going to go higher because that usually predicts higher consumer inflation. The last record it set, Mike, was in October, and the record it set before that was in September. So it's pretty clear prices, consumer prices, inflation, real inflation is going to keep going up. But gold and silver are falling. So, Mike, first of all, I know you're going to share some charts with us and you have an announcement to make, too. So everyone stick around for that. But first, Mike, what do you think is going on? Why are gold and silver falling in this environment? You know, it's just totally bizarre. And sometimes it just trying to wrap my head around all the different stuff that this uh, Keynesian expansion of the currency supply has caused. Uh, is, is very difficult. The dollar is rising internationally. That's probably the reason for the pullback. But why should the dollar rise when you've got all of this raging inflation? Because the dollar domestically is being devalued through inflation, while internationally it's gaining purchasing power against other currencies. So people, that means there's more demand for the dollar. This could be uh, Brent Johnson's milkshake theory coming true, or it could be that people are being scared away from other currencies because some other currencies might be being inflated more than the dollar. It's just so difficult to try and figure out all of this stuff. Uh, I do see this, though, as an opportunity. I think, you know, uh, I did a video last week on, uh, by the way, you will hear dogs barking. Uh, horns honking, and you might see some chickens uh, behind yes. <laughs> I'm up on the ranch right now, and uh, there, we've got a couple of goats. We've got uh, more than a dozen chickens and more than a dozen ducks, and it's sort of fun up here. So you'll hear some background noise. There's some uh, construction people up here that are going to be leaving shortly. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, it's it's what it says is that this uh, this pullback in precious metals is probably a short-term opportunity. Uh, if you've got raging inflation like this, over the long run, uh, gold and silver rise during these periods of time. When you've got uh, negative real yields, when you're, uh, the yields on bonds and so on uh, are negative because you take the yield minus inflation. And so everything, if, if you park capital over in bonds right now, uh, you are losing a lot. I mean, it's, it's very costly. So for me, uh, you know, one of the announcement that I was going to make is I am going to use this opportunity myself. You know, a couple of weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, I said, you know, the silver had fallen or gold. And uh, I said that yeah, but it could fall further, so I'm not buying yet. Well, now I am. Uh, there's going to be uh, some other announcements on my Insiders video because there are some other uh, investments that I've made. So I'm going to be making an Insiders video and posting that as well. Uh, and so they'll find out what I'm buying. Uh, and um, it's, um, this is just an opportunity. So do you want to get into these charts or do you have any comments on that, Jeff? Well, what I was going to say, Mike, is, you know, a lot of people are puzzled as to why gold and silver aren't responding to the higher inflation figure. But, um, you know, the S&P just hit and we put this in our alert this morning for those of you that get our emails. Uh, the S&P just hit a, a 67th record high this year on this past Friday. So uh, it's 10 shy of the record. So there could be more coming. So a lot of mainstream investors are still in the stock market. Um, yeah. Also, the Fed might increase its tapering purchases, 
uh, or taper of the purchases, I should say. Um, and so that could be setting the stage for, um, you know, some more rate hikes in 2022. Whether they actually do that, we'll see. But that's what the, the mainstream, that's the knee-jerk reaction people are having that, is that this could mean more rate hikes, which, you know, the knee-jerk reaction is that's bad for gold, which is not the case. It's the real rate that really matters. Uh, and then, like you said, the U.S. dollar is rising. So you have a confluence of factors that are, you know, uh, impacting prices right now. But I see it as a short-term reaction, you could say, to some long-term major fundamental catalysts that have yet to play out. So um, I don't think we're wrong about this. I don't think that's what that means. I think we're just, you know, still building the fort, you could say. Yeah, you know, I, I just... I uh, did a video on symmetry. And if the symmetry move plays out, we've got until like March or so of this year, March or April, to accumulate. And then uh, it would be off to the races. But that's if. Uh, but it, if you look at symmetry, it plays out quite often. And uh, this uh, cup and handle formation that we've made with gold uh, is extremely bullish as far as technical indicators. But, uh, you know, eventually you know, Mike, you were going to show us some charts there of things that you actually said last summer. And I thought they were very insightful. So uh, share yeah. some of these gold and silver charts with us. OK, so um, the uh, first one that I'll show you is a chart of gold that I made back in October of 2020 with some targets. And, uh, you know, you've, what I did was I did a Fibonacci retracement from the, uh, the low in March of tw the March 2020 uh, flash crash, basically. It was a pretty quick crash and recovery. Uh, there, by the way, is another example of symmetry. Look at that crash. It's an inverse head and shoulders with each shoulder taking about the exact same time duration uh, before breaking through. And we now have that uh, long-term symmetry from the 2011 high. Uh, there was a consolidation. Uh, and then we've got uh, the consolidation we've been going through. So this is from more than a year ago, this chart. And it's showing that there is a major trading range support and the 50% retracement at 1771.42. Uh, we're, I believe, at 1773 right now, which is close enough. So that's one of the reasons I'm going to be making a purchase. Yeah, but we hit 1771 this morning, oh, and okay. it's bounced back up a, just a, a couple dollars. But we okay. actually hit that 50% level this morning, today. Wow. Okay. And we're on that major trading range support, which suggests that uh, it may not go any lower than this. But it is possible that it could go low. So I'm going to be taking some of my capital and buying uh, silver because of the gold-silver ratio, which we'll talk about in a minute. I'm not going to be buying gold at this point. We're looking at a chart of gold. Uh, so I'm going to be buying silver. So that brings us uh, to the next chart, which is uh, silver. Uh, also from October 30, 2020, this chart that I made uh, with a 50% retracement of uh, 2083, and silver is not down there yet, but it is fairly close. Uh, then you see a major trading range support at the 61.8% retracement, uh, which is $18.65. So if you see, but you know, one of the things that does happen, there's round number support. There will be a bunch of buyers that come in if it goes down there at 20 bucks or just above it. Uh, there would be more at, at 19. So I would be buying at those prices as well. I would not spend all of my capital uh, in one tranche. And then I want to go all the way back to uh, the, my final chart uh, was an update on this in, um, on March 26th of 2021. The reason I want to go to this one is it shows that on that first chart that shows the major trading range for support, you don't see any support in the 50% retracement uh, uh, area, that $20.83. But when you go uh, to this, uh, the 
uh, March of 2021 uh, chart, March 26, 2021, uh, you see the, that it's a longer term chart. And you see that there was, you know, th this one has a slightly different high because this is not an intraday chart. This, is, uh, this chart is done on the close of each day. So it's pennies different, but uh, $20.62 uh, for the 50% retracement. And you see it uh, touching the high of uh, July 2016, July or August 2016. Uh, and that is a support zone uh, right in the middle then, uh, right in that 50% retracement. So, um, you know, we've got 2272 and uh, uh, what was the, uh, so we're at 2193 right now. Uh, so we're, we're slightly below that 38.2% retracement. But yeah, I drew these uh, and I've, I've set aside capital uh, sort of waiting to see if these prices happen. Uh, you know, I'm in a, a fairly good position when it comes to accumulating metals because I've been doing it now uh, since 2002, getting ready for what I saw coming. And I thought that in 2008, that that would be it, but they papered over 2008 and they've made the problem worse and they bought themselves some time. But the ultimate crash is going to be so bad now because of the quantity of currency that they've created to create this fake economy. So what's your take on all of this? I like that last silver chart you showed, Mike, because that $20.62 level shows not only is that the 50% retracement level, but it's also a support back from going all the way back to 2016, like you said. So there's yeah. a lot of support there. Again, we don't know for certain that it's going to hold, but boy, if it hit that level, I think that'd be another uh, chance for me to take advantage of, of that price. You know, I know people hate this when, when it does a pullback, uh, but you can, uh, you can, uh, if your dollar cost averaging in this lowers your overall buying price by, uh, getting a little bit extra during a pullback, uh, your, the, your entire investment, the buy-in price is lowered just a little from doing that. And, uh, that's the reason that I will be taking advantage of this right now. We are on these support areas. Uh, that should hold, but may not. I mean, this stuff, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> this stuff <laughs> doesn't always play out. Uh, the, the technical analysis, uh, you know, if it works uh, more than half the time, it's worth paying attention to. And it, it pretty much has worked more than half the time. So. Yeah, so Mike will be putting uh, an insider's video out, video out soon to those of you who are insiders. Okay, Mike, uh, there's also a book that's brand new book out from our friend James Turk that I think you wanted to talk about. It just came out um, two weeks ago, and it's called Money and Liberty. It's available now to purchase. Um, I haven't read it yet, but this looks pretty good, Mike. Uh, so what do you think of this new book coming out from James? Uh, well, James is a friend of mine, and he's a great guy, and he's one of the reasons that I got into this business, you know, I I would see him and uh, Dave Morgan on stage presenting monetary history and how these echoes from the past keep on happening. And uh, it just absolutely fascinated me. And that was the reason I got into it. We've done several interviews with James and uh, his first book was very successful. Uh, I haven't read this one yet, but I'm going to because he's a great author and this is the time to learn everything that you can about this. Because I, I just, I mean, I've got this strange feeling uh, and you know, the ranch that I bought here is part of that strange feeling. We've got, uh, we can grow our own food. I've got my own water source. We've been putting in solar uh, and uh, it's uh, far away from uh, the city where there could be uh, unrest if, if something really major unfolds. Another thing that we uh, need to mention here is the gold-silver ratio right now uh, is, is favoring silver. So I won't be buying gold. I'm looking at gold as an indicator. 
Uh, if you don't own any gold though, uh, I would definitely look at it uh, because I don't give any advice of what to do. But if I didn't own any, I would be buying both. Uh, but whenever the gold silver ratio is, uh, you know, up in the, you know, above the 70s, I buy pretty much only silver. Uh, and right, because right now it's, you know, 181st, it's at 81 right now. Yeah. Okay. And uh, a viewer, uh, let me see, Connor Artif. Uh, said, Mike, when considering swapping out gold for silver or silver for gold, the gold-silver ratio spot, in parentheses, shouldn't be considered, but rather the gold-silver ratio, including premiums, parentheses, is more realistic. Would you agree? Yes, I would. In fact, uh, that's the reason that a lot of my holdings, the majority of my silver holdings, is in silver eagles, because the mint charges this very high premium uh, and then those premiums, uh, when silver becomes, so, so eagles are already over spot, but the premiums expand when everybody can't get any uh, because they're so limited in production compared to bars and so on. Uh, so that premium really uh, is very elastic. And so if you sell at the right time, you get a whole lot more gold, or you can even just play the premium by uh, going from silver eagles, and when they're very rare and hard to get, uh, selling them and buying more ounces, a whole lot more ounces of uh, silver by taking advantage of the Instavolt program, uh, which is something I might do someday in the future. Um, so, you know, we'll see where all of this goes. Uh, yeah, I would point out, Mike, that uh, a lot of people say, hey, the the, premium on silver eagles is so high and you're right it is high uh, but right now uh, many dealers including us are offering a, a buyback premium on silver eagles that is above spot and right. significantly above spot and i think that's going to continue as long as demand remains high supply remains tight and just wait till prices take off again and break right. through thirty dollars you know, so uh, yes, you're paying a higher premium for Silver Eagles, but in the right environment, we'll get a lot of that premium back. Well, that just about wraps it up. So I want to thank you a lot, Jeff. And I'll see all of the insiders over at goldsilver.com for the update. Thank you very yes. much. Thanks, Mike. And Merry Christmas. Oh, and Merry Christmas to you too. And happy holidays to all of the viewers.